Hey y'all, welcome to another video from Reckonout.com. So today I'm taking a Pelican case and turning it into a battery box that'll fit on the rail of my kayak. So the current version of my battery box, it's all separate parts and I just end up forgetting too many things, so I wanted one self-contained unit. And I'm using a Yak Attack switchblade so it can articulate down and uh, be easily stowed when I'm not needing the fish finder. I also added a USB port so I can charge my phone as well as my GoPros. So here's how I made it. So this is a 6x10 cutting board that I'm just going to bisect. And once I have a line right down the middle, I'm going to mark a 1 inch and a 2 inch hole. And these will serve as the holes that will hold the mighty bolts that hold it to the rail. So I want to ensure that there's enough clearance for my pelican case. And this knob will come off the switchblade because we're actually not going to use it for its intended purpose. We're actually going to use it for holding it to the rail. This is a quarter inch hole that I'm drilling here. And I have two mighty bolts that I'm going to use. So there's the one inch. And I'm going to drill another one that's two inches from the other edge. So with the Mighty Bolts installed, I need to attach the Pelican case to the cutting board. So this is an old Pelican case. You can see that it's already had the foam cut out, and I just want to repurpose it. And I'm going to drill holes down, and I'm going to take one-inch stainless hardware and drill back up through the Pelican case. So you want four holes because this is what's holding it to the rail. You want it on there really good. And then I'm actually going to get some marine goop and I'm going to cover each of the holes and put some nylock nuts on there. And you can tighten those down. So we need the mounts to sit on top of the pelican case. So I need to also trim up some flat sections so the mounts can sit flush against the pelican case. This is the battery I'm using. It's a 12 volt, 12 volt, 7 amp hour battery. And this is the 12 volt USB charger. I get the circ circumference and then I set my calipers to half that so I can score a line. This will serve where I need to drill. I actually drill a little bit higher. You can see the first hole because I want to have, I want to have more clearance for that hole so I can shut the box. I believe this is a one and a quarter inch hole that I'm drilling here. So with the hole drilled, you can start setting up the Yak Attack switchblade. We're going to mount this plate. You can see I put a screw ball where the knob would normally be because I'm actually going to use that area for holding the fish finder. Again, cut them off flush and add some marine goop. Then you want to make two pigtails with a spade connection. This is what we're going to hook directly to the battery. This is 14 gauge wire. So with those created, this is a Wago connection. I had these left over from when I made my flounder light. So when I hook those up and I check test for voltage, I get 12 volts, which is perfect. Then I use the wire that came with the USB. I cut off the ring terminals and it's already fused with a 10 amp, 10, 10 amp inline fuse. So I figured I'd just repurpose that. It's a little long, but I didn't want to have to attach more spade bits. So it'll work. This is a two spade connection that we use for a trailer. I cut that in half and we're going to use this to connect the fish finder. In order to make sure it's watertight, I add a cable gland. And this just allows you to make a pass through, but also keep it watertight by screwing down the top nut. And that will make an airtight, or I'm sorry, a watertight connection. So once attached, you want to put the backing knob on or the backing nut on and seal that with marine goop. And when that's tight, you could then take the two spade connection, thread it through the cable gland. And when you tighten up that top nut, it actually makes a watertight connection. In all honesty, I still put marine goop on this because I'm just a little bit paranoid about water getting in. And then I'm going to add a 3 amp inline fuse to the positive side and then just a little bit of extra wire to the negative side. So heat shrink that down. And again, the Wago connections, it's just as simple as putting all the red 
on the onto the red connection and all the black onto the black connection. And this is also makes it easy to expand. So I'm fret I'm threading in the USB port and I'm going to seal this down with marine goop. Get a little bit messy here, but you can clean it up. And I'll take a clamp because I want this to be again watertight and I clamp that down and just let it sit until it dries and cures. So once cured, I can then put the battery back Again, hook all the red to red, all the black to black. You have two fused circuits, one 3 amp, one 10 amp, one controlling the USB, one controlling the fish finder. So when you close it down, I'll show you how I shed a lot of weight. This is a lithium battery, a little more expensive, but a lot lighter, especially if you're gonna ride it on the rail. And then I just have to hook up the transducer arm. Yak Attack has a great video on how to do this. I have a Humminbird. Um, but it gives instructions on how to hook up this transducer arm. I had a gift card from Buy My Bass Pass to kayak bass fishing this year, so I use that to buy this transducer arm. There's some ways that I could have um, built my own, but this just seemed about as economical, and it's a, it's a pretty uh, well thought out because it can tighten up, it can articulate, and you can fold it back into the kayak when you don't need it. So I'll put a link into the description to the Yak Attack Switchblade putting this big loop in here so it's easy to flip back and forth. Then you just put this plate on and that will hold it in place. And I had the opportunity to get out this weekend with the kids, try this out. It worked perfectly and it's a lot better option than my previous version. Thanks.